Good morning and uh, welcome to a press conference for Monday, January 25th. Um, a lot has happened in two weeks, but we have a lot of things to talk about and certainly I'll be happy to answer, I'm sure, a lot of questions. And if I don't cover some of the stuff that's happened over the last two weeks, certainly feel free to ask me, but I didn't want to, uh, I kind of wanted to lean going forward on a few things. Uh, certainly mayor's cleanup, um, that's one of the things we want to talk about. Uh, the mayor's cleanup uh, will be, our first one will be for the downtown area, uh, will be January the 30th, so it'll be this sat uh, this Saturday. Um, in the downtown area, it includes portions of the surrounding neighborhoods. Please visit cityofpensacola.com to view cleanup map for details. Also, uh, this event allows Pensacola Sanitation customers to, uh, to clean up um, in the cleanup, they're eligible to put items at the curb for pickup. City of Sanitation Services will pick them up free of charge, but you need to be in the map area. So please visit cityofpensacola.com. If you're in the map, that will be uh, will be on Saturday. We will be out picking it up. Just place it curbside, and we will take care of it. Uh, secondly, some of you in the media saw us sent something out over the weekend. Um, again, we certainly are are gonna to continue to try to do a better job of uh, reminding people and also sending stuff to you. We need your help to remind people. We have holidays uh, that the whole garbage cycle moves. I think everyone on my street had their garbage out on Thursday. Um, I had sent an email where a gentleman was very irate that his garbage wasn't gonna get picked up till Friday. Uh, but uh, I tried to remind him that we told him that uh, two weeks ago, but uh, somehow or another we're going to keep working on that and any help that you could do for us in getting that information out uh, to make sure people realize, you know, when there's a holiday, uh, we're trying to work around it. Uh, we hate having to do that, but uh, we got another one coming up here in February uh, for President's Day. And again, everybody will simply move down one. Um, if it's not picked up, don't worry, we'll come pick it up the next day. Uh, the good news is we're not going to miss anybody. So again, um, we'll certainly work with you on that and, and we certainly appreciate your assistance in helping us get that out there. Um, we also have some town halls coming up. I know uh, we, we will be shortly opening the, um, uh, the Bayview Center here shortly. I know uh, Representative Andrade and Councilman Moore have a, um, have a town hall scheduled uh, for uh, for the for the community center, it's, it will be opening. We also have CPAC town halls that will be coming up. Uh, the Citizens Police Advisory Committee will host two town halls um, and provide the opportunity for Pensacola residents to share their thoughts on various topics, including relationships between community and Pensacola Police Department. These will be Thursday, February 4th at 6 p.m. at the Fricker Center, uh, which is at 900 North F Street. Um, and then also we will have one on Thursday, February 18th at 6 p.m. at Bayview Community Center, which is 2001 East Lloyd Street. So again, um, uh, the chairman, uh, we worked with him to talk about those two places. We get one on the west side, one on the east side. Uh, members of the public uh, may attend the meeting in person. However, they will be limited seating capacity and <clears throat> face mask and social distancing will be required. The public is encouraged to participate in these meetings and let their voices be heard. There will also be virtual uh, participation options uh, that will be offered. The meetings will be live streamed on Facebook at facebook.com slash Pensacola Mayor. Uh, the public may also submit comments and questions using the online form at the City of Pensacola starting Monday, that's next Monday, February 1st. Uh, so again, we want you to participate. And we certainly, if you can't come, we understand and we want you to participate virtually. There will certainly be that opportunity, uh, <clears throat> but we will be, be be combining the virtual with this. I know that that um, Casey and her department have been working uh, with the BPAC, uh, CPAC committee, and they have got this uh, ready to go. And again, I want to I want to say that uh, the decision came down that we we're going to be able to do virtual with the two meetings. So we want you to be able to attend. Uh, either one of those ones. Again, Thursday the 4th and Thursday, February the 8th, um, we'll be having those meetings. Uh, and then finally, um, uh, next, I guess, Pensacola International Airport, we continue to see positive things happening there. Uh, the airport continues to remain ahead of national averages uh, after impacts of COVID-19. Nationally, airports are continually to stay down 60 to 65 percent. Uh, to compare um, pa passenger numbers at, at Pensacola International Airport for the week January 17th through the 23rd, we're down 45% uh, from the same week in 2020. Um, and again, because of this, we see some new um, some new uh, airline destinations being announced. Southwest Airline is adding three nonstop destinations to Pensacola International Airport. <clears throat> so we're getting more places to go. In March 2021, 
Southwest will add three nonstop destination services at Pensacola International Airport. These new destinations are Atlanta, Chicago Midway, and St. Louis. Uh, so March 11th and continuing through April 11th, Southwest will begin one daily flight to, uh, to Atlanta, uh, one flight to uh, St. Louis on Saturdays, and two flights uh, to Chicago Midway on Saturdays. We're excited uh, to see the airport continuing to prosper even during COVID-19. We think these are, again, we've had multiple other airline services. They come in, they experiment with routes. We've seen almost all of them continue to stay and expand. Again, if it hadn't been for COVID, we thought we would have had a direct flight with New York. We continue to work with Newark. Um, when we come out of COVID, we still think we'll be a viable option for that. So there are a number of great things happening at the airport despite COVID-19. Um, COVID we do have some lane closures I want to talk to you about. Uh, temporary lane closure at Alkanese and Government Street. It will be January 26, which is tomorrow. Drivers will experience a temporary lane closure and detour beginning Tuesday the 26th at Alkanese and Government Street as construction on the on the uh, Alkanese Street outfall to Pensacola Bay Stormwater Project uh, Treatment Project. Um, eastbound traffic on Government Street will be detoured around the intersection, uh, but westbound uh, lane will remain open to through traffic. The detour is expected to remain in effect for approximately three days, weather permitting. Doesn't look like we're have rain in the middle of the week, so it very well uh, could be a little bit longer, but again, we're going to work as fast as we can to get this done. This is continuing the things we're doing to clean up our bay and our, our water bodies. Certainly we've seen improvements at Bayou Chico and Bayou Tahar. We're not even finished all the way. Uh, this will also help with Pensacola Bay. Uh, so we, we appreciate your patience with us uh, and we'll get that as fast as we can back open. Uh, for any questions about the project, you can certainly contact City of Pensacola Public Works and Facilities at 850-435-1645. Also, Casey, I do believe that this is all on the um, on, on the uh, on the work report that that uh, the, that city has now uh, that you can just go online and see on our website. So again, I'll let you confirm that. Uh, also, want to talk with you. Last week we met with DOT. We had our virtual meeting. Um, good news, um, not necessarily bad news, but changes of news. Uh, good news is, even despite some delays and some uh, and some piling, some piles uh, driving. Um, they do believe they're still, they think there's enough time to catch up on things that they've got. And they've got two pile drivers out there for the bridge. So DOT's discussion with us is they still believe uh, that the end of March is the time they can make on what they're doing. Uh, they've got two pile drivers out there. And, and again, they believe there's sufficient time, barring any unforeseen weather issues, uh, that, that they can get caught up. Um, and they continue to work on that. Uh, the good news is, is again, almost all the materials have been made and cast. It is now just simply putting them together and uh, and moving that forward. And the hardest part is the pile driving. So once the piles get done, it's fairly easy to set the beams. The concrete decking is really the the, the finishing touch, but it it you know it's it's the easiest part on there. So uh, they feel very comfortable that they can get the uh, pilings done, set the trophies that it all should be moving well. And, and again, they, they continue to think that's where we're going. There is a little bit of a change in news that we had in this week. And I just kind of want to begin to work work with you on the assessment of, of what's going to happen. When the bridge reopens, um, it is likely that 17th Avenue, well, it's almost a certainty that 17th Avenue is not going to be open and there, we're not going to have the roundabout finished underneath. Now, traffic can flow through. Um, and right now, uh, Derek and I are going to be meeting with, with their engineers uh, to try to see some things we can do, but there will be a period that we'll be working with traffic around the area coming in uh, to the landing. We may not have all options open immediately as they continue to work, um, and we don't even have a, a deadline at this point, but we, it was communicated to us that they do believe they can get the flyover uh, to Gregory uh, finished, and that's what we're shooting for, uh, to take all that traffic over there to Gregory. Uh, as it comes inbound. So again, we're working through this. Um, and again, this would have happened. This would have happened if there had been no hurricane. We, this would have eventually happened at some point. We would have had this problem in dealing with the landing. So um, at least in some ways, most of the delay has been taken up while, while the bridge was down. Um, and again, our whole goal is to get at least the traffic in and get it into uh, coming onto Gregory Street, get that flyover done. Um, so we're going to be meeting with DOT and we continue to work on that, but we want to keep you updated 
uh, and let you know what's happening at this point with the bridge. Uh, boat ramp update. City staff are working as diligently as possible with FEMA, uh, and they control the schedule uh, by their set processes. Unfortunately, uh, we are requesting um, we are requesting some mitigation on every project to try to prevent future occurrences of these facilities being shut down when tropical events occur. Unfortunately, whenever we ask for or go through mitigation process, this is the smartest way uh, to, to save ourselves in the future, uh, but all of this slows down with the FEMA process. Uh, so again, many things are a few boat ramps that we're working on, most of the bulkhead, uh, the places we're working through. We are trying to, um, trying to uh, do everything we can with FEMA to mitigate and prevent damage further damage if we ever have another storm, which we know is not a question of if, it's a question of when. Uh, so we might as well do things now uh, that, that, that make us more resilient, uh, more able to come back. And we are going to keep working with FEMA on these things. <clears throat> but, uh, but again, that takes time. FEMA is in the process of an environmental review and the projects cannot move forward until this is completed. Uh, we don't have estimated times at this particular time, but we are working as fast as we can on every single project. And again, if we don't control the time process, which we don't sometimes working with FEMA, uh, we wanted to be very upfront with you and tell you what's going on. We do have boat ramps that are workable, uh, both Bayou Tahar um, and, uh, and, and 17th Avenue are workable at this particular time and uh, they are usable. Um, is we, we the other boat ramps that we have in the city? We will continue to work through the best we can. Uh, but at this time, until we can get mitigation through <clears throat> through FEMA, I don't know at, at this particular time when those will open. <clears throat> Certainly, the one right there at Sanders Beach is is one of the challenges of why that one is closed, and it will remain closed until we can get through this process with FEMA. We do believe the project as it comes up will be will be better built to sustain. Uh, against damage in the future, um, and we believe it will be a better use of taxpayer dollars to make sure that we don't have repetitive loss in those uh, circumstances uh, that we design, whatever we do, uh, to make sure there's as little impact um, because of the storm the next one. Uh, COVID-19, uh, again, we have a number of, of things out there. Our positivity rate still is hovering in that 10 um, to, to 18%. Uh, it would be better if we could keep it down, uh, but we seem to be daily in that occurrence. But I will say some of our new case numbers ha have seen some decline um, or leveling, and we've seen some decline in uh, hospitalizations. Uh, we went from 261 on the 20th, 264 on the 21st, then 252 on the 22nd, 233 on the 23rd, uh, yesterday 222, and today we're at 225, a, a slight increase, but still at 225. Um, just a week and a half ago, uh, we were at 291. Um, the the Wednesday, uh, right after our last press conference, we were at 291. So we we are seeing some trends come down. We got we need to still continue to do the measures uh, that we can to protect ourselves, wearing a mask, washing hands, uh, and the, remember the mask ordinance is still in effect. The city council voted to extend it through. February 25th, uh, which requires face coverings to be worn while inside the city limits. So we continue to still work on that and we ask for your patience and compliance with us. We can drive down these numbers. We've seen them come down almost 70 uh, hospitalizations. So if we can do that uh, again uh, for the next week and a half, we will be in a much better place and we can keep moving forward. Vaccine, perhaps the most important thing, Florida continues to prioritize residents over 65 and healthcare workers for COVID-19. The state is working on distri distributing uh, vaccines and supplies that becomes available. The demand is flo in Florida is far outpacing the supply, so we ask you to please uh, continue to work with us, have patience. Um, the, again, we also have second shots coming in. I know people who are going and getting their second shots. We do expect to have, um, we do expect to have a number of uh, of vaccines coming online uh, here in the very near future. Uh, so we ask you to be patient, continue to work through this. Um, there, there, we will be able to get there and it is gonna make a significant difference, but we gotta get everybody a second shot. If you don't get the second shot, you're only about 50% covered. Um, you get the second shot, you'll be 90, over 95% effective. Uh, there is the one coming out in February, possibly a one shot. Of course, it's about 70% effective. But again, these are the things we're working through, and we hope to see some more of these um, vaccines come available in February. 
uh, so the supply, we can continue to work with that. Um, that's a little bit about where we are um, and some of the things. I know we've had a number of meetings, a number of things going on. So if you have a question and I didn't cover something, um, I, I, I apologize. I did want to say uh, the last two weekends, what I've been doing more than anything else is moving. Uh, my mother-in-law were in the process of selling the house she was in that uh, that was the house I grew up in. My family was there for 20 two years and she's been there for 21 years. So after 43 years, there's a lot of stuff that is in there. But we found a few things. We found a uh, picture. If you remember a lot of things we've been talking about Hitsman Park and, and they talked about how I said that I played soccer at Hitsman when it was a communist sport. Well, here is here's proof. I am a product of Pensacola Sports uh, Parks and Rec right there. Uh, so again, this and you can see there's a fence there around the old Hitsman, but uh, that was from way back in Hitsman in the late 70s. Uh, that tells you how long ago that was, just a little while ago. Uh, but while I do think uh, Pensacola Parks and Recs is a great program and they certainly do a great job of working and and uh, I, I can't say enough about what Brian and his team do today. They're, they're the, they are the best. Unfortunately, I didn't get to participate in um, in in baseball because my my father always moved us uh, for the legislature so we went to Tallahassee but I did find Todd Thompson who is the president of the Chamber of Commerce now for the city of Pensacola he and I were actually on the bottom row there next to each other I'm in the middle and he's right next to me and you notice Todd has some kind of a black eye I'm not sure maybe that was maybe that was a ball he took in the face I can't remember uh, but but uh, Todd and I were on the same uh, baseball team way back uh, way back there in Tallahassee but it's amazing to see what happens to people over the years but uh, but again uh, I spent the last two weekends cleaning out so I've gotten to, I've gotten to go through a lot of memorabilia and thought those were kind of fun to at least bring forward and let you see that that I did in fact play soccer when it was a communist sport here at Hitsman so uh, anyways I'm open to your questions and look forward to answering all right, all right. Just to confirm um, what you mentioned about the project earlier, it is on the Capital Improvement Projects dashboard, which is on our website at cityofpensacola.com. Um, the first question is from Dave at WWF. Please comment on the report that Governor DeSantis is refusing to work with the Biden administration on COVID-19 vaccine distribution. Uh, again, I, um we, we control what we have at the city of Pensacola and over here we're working as hard as we can to make sure we have a good supply uh, coming in here. I know Florida uh, was was securing supplies and I have no idea, uh, you know, the president and the governor uh, and the, the two administrations, they'll have to figure that out. Uh, I can just tell you that Pensacola is going to be as receptive as we can to working with whoever we need to to make sure we get stuff for our citizens. Uh, I think when you see what's going on, what the hospitals are doing here, uh, we're very in tune. I will be in conversations with them today. Uh, we didn't meet last week, so we will be uh, having that conversation at two o'clock. So I look forward to hearing from them and any news that I get from them, we will share on Wednesday uh, on our Facebook Live. So we will, we will, if we have new information about anything on vaccines, uh, we will share that information on, um, on Wednesday. <clears throat> This is from Jeremy in Weekly. Can you give an update on where the city is on tiny home efforts? Um, I mean, we are, we have the ordinance going through uh, right now. I expect in February it will be coming forward to council. Um, um, I know we've got a number of people looking at different things. I know that uh, this week, um, uh, Janice Gilly and Robert um, uh, Bender We'll be going over to Tallahassee and they'll be taking sort of the same tour I did back in December. Um, so I'm excited to see what they have. Um, I know when we met back in December, uh, we talked some about this and, and look forward to hear what they have to say. Uh, they've already done their ordinance. My understanding is ours is going to mirror some of theirs. Obviously, it's going to be tailored to districts in the city, but um, Regulation Q is now part of our stuff. Um, so we're ready to move forward with that. Uh, and I think we will have an ordinance. Uh, my hope is to have something done here um, in February or something. So, uh, so I, I know I just I, I don't have Sherry on here to know exactly where we are, uh, but you know we we have been working on it. We have met on it. We have discussed it. And we do expect to see it coming through in the very near future. And this is also from Jeremy and Weekly. 
What are your thoughts on the lack of public participation on the public input sessions last week for the police chief search? Um, I mean, it's challenging with COVID. Um, uh, I mean, we, we're, I'll talk to Gary and we'll continue to keep it open and we'll make it available um, for anybody to be able to talk. But um, I mean, at the end of the day, we've we've tried to make it very open. We've tried to allow people to communicate um, and we certainly realize the, the difficulty in, um, in, in, in the circumstances with COVID, but we've made every attempt uh, to do that. And we hope that, uh, that people will take advantage of that. I know they're talking with some small groups of people, um, but uh, we will continue to deal with that. And, and if, if people want to, uh, if they want to make comments, please make comments. I mean, I try to continue to tell people, this is not only about who the police chief is, this is about where we're saying to our police and our, our administrative staff, what our priorities we see for the community. What do we see? And, and the best way to do that is to make your voice known. So, um, you know, I, I, I think we went through this process because we wanted to hear from people. So I hope they will take advantage. We've heard a number of complaints, but we hope people will take advantage. This is the same reason we're doing uh, the CPAC, uh, but we haven't seen as much outside impact. So we're, we're looking forward to the two town halls. We understand how challenging it's been to provide information, but we will see with the two town halls and maybe those things will, will, will be, um, can be incorporated. Certainly on the one on the fourth, Gary won't be finished. Um, if there are things that come open on the fourth, we would highly encourage you uh, to participate in the CPAC. That's the one at Fricker Center. Um, and from there, we can take any in, input uh, and certainly get it to Gary. That that won't be that won't be too late for him to uh, you know the 18th session may be a little late, but uh, I think on the fourth uh, we can still work with him on getting some of those input and comments in there. But uh, you know, again, we want to take as much information as we can. We certainly make it available, and um, I wish we were able to come together more. Um, but unfortunately, where we stand in COVID, that that probably won't be the case for probably the next 60, 60 days or so. This, this is from Andrew at News Radio. This weekend, I happened to see the graffiti and disrepair to the support underneath the monument to lost children. In the past, I've seen the Amtrak station and Bayview Bluffs stairs slash walkover. I know it's difficult to combat, but can you talk about how the city does respond to graffiti and whether you think more should or could be done to keep city amenities looking nice? Should people call 311? Uh, anytime people should call 311. We certainly appreciate that. I think when you look at um, the build, the challenge with the building, and we're still there with the um, with the uh, the train station, is we've, we've got a group that we're working with, um, and they've got a number of years to collect their money. Um, so at this point, seeing that we're we're just it's not worth the city going and spending money. That that that's the whole purpose of who's taking that building. We've 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 gotten to deal with them and and move forward in that with the council. So um, we expect them to take care of that. That's part of their lease, um, but I realize they're still on the fundraising side, so it could be a little while longer at the train station. Uh, I saw your stuff this weekend. I made our staff aware of it. Um, one of the challenges that we've got is we just have a significant amount of structural damage still on that facility. It's it's tough to know uh, where we will be and, and what's going on. It's just, it's a very difficult part to uh, uh, placement of it and, and what's happening. I'm, I'm not sure we may need to reevaluate sort of where that, that location is and in, 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 in that monument, if, it, if it's workable in that, in, that, uh, in that location, certainly with what we have in dealing with storms and everything else that we know. Uh, so we may have to evaluate uh, where we go and what, what happens with that site. Uh, but overall, um, we'll continue to see what's going forward. And again, for the most part, nobody, the things you saw, and I saw your 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 post down there, Andrew, nobody knew where any of that stuff was down there and when when things were where they were before the storm. Obviously, the storm has removed everything from there. Uh, so it's wide open. I think at some point it will it will it will naturally grow back. Um, but I, I do love the uh, the uh, I saw Alan Gray responded to you with the Ishkush um you know, when we went out to British Columbia years ago, I think when the um, when the Winter Olympics were out there at Whistler, uh, they had those all over the place. I know that they had them up there at Whistler. The the, the stones you stack on top of stones, it's something very uh, uh, very indigenous to that part of the world. 
uh, the people that were there. Uh, so I, I noticed people have been doing that even before the storm. But now that the storm has really cleared out the rocks, I noticed a ton of them out there. And I saw you had taken pictures of them. And, you know, I, I, I love it. I think it, it creates it's kind of goes back to uh, what, uh, uh, you know, Peter Kayama that I talked about the public art we're about to put down there at Bartram Park. Uh, we don't like the spray painting. Uh, but I do like the uh, I do like the little Ishkush, uh, uh, you know, the, those those are kind of uh, interesting, those rock formations. And they kind of create those quirky little emotional uh, places that that work. So I, I, while we, we do like the stone part, uh, we, we're not so happy with the with the um, with the graffiti. Uh, we'll continue to work as we can. Uh, it, it is it's just a challenge. I mean, you know, it's always one of the things if. If we knew where the people were going to be with graffiti, this would be an easy thing to, to deal with. Uh, we'll certainly look in, in any any ways we can. There are things you can do to perhaps uh, make surfaces uh, less less receptive to graffiti. We can look at a variety of other things uh, that we can do, but but we will continue to work on that and see what we can do. So, but um, but as far as that location, I, I, there there are a lot of things with it, and I, I I communicated to staff over the weekend after seeing your post, um, and and they're telling me there's a significant amount of structural damage in that whole facility. Um, and so this is one of the challenges, and one of the things we have to look at, especially as we deal with FEMA for for uh, uninsured things uh, and how we just turn out making it more resilient. And it, there may not be a way for us to. To make that area more resilient, it just keeps getting damaged, and we don't really want to deal with repetitive loss. So we're we're looking at evaluating a couple of things, but I did talk to Keith over the weekend about that. This is from Laura at WEAR, wondering if you had a number of how many city permitted events were affected by the restrictions announced last month, including any that had to scale back or cancel altogether. Uh, you know, I don't know, Laura. I know a lot of them were, were went ahead and canceled anyways. I mean, certainly what you saw what happened with Mardi Gras and a number of other private events. Um, uh, I, I, what I'm finding is most people are, are canceling anyways, regardless of what the city says one way or the other uh, from from what we've what we've done. Um, our goal is hopefully when we can see that vaccines are making a difference and our numbers are coming down, we'd love to get those things back open. Um, you know, we, I mean, we, we last year in the budget we budgeted for our community centers to be open this year in January and in, uh, in in Saturday. Uh, we have that done. We have a number of programs. We're working on things that are happening in our community centers, but we're not able to do to do any of those programs. So we've got a number of things. Our arts program at, at Woodland Heights. Uh, we're looking at a couple other things this summer at Fricker. So. We've got a number of things that we want to be doing in community centers, and we can't get in there and do them uh, because of COVID. So we're very hopeful that the vaccine is going to change that so that by this summer uh, we can really be more um, uh, fully utilizing all these things that we have and, and really do the things we want to do. I mean, these these are things I'd much rather talk about. I, I, you know, I'm looking forward to the day when we can we can do programs, we can plan them, we can actually do them. And we can we can do it in a safe way that doesn't hurt any anybody and, and take home any viruses to people's family. Uh, but obviously the challenges we're dealing with have really made it so that 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 we haven't been able to as effectively deal with that. Um, I hate that basketball has gotten postponed, but I mean we had the same thing happen with baseball, same thing happened with soccer. So we're trying to work through these things and get back op open to a, a regular life. But uh, you know, from from our standpoint, I haven't seen a lot of people cancel events. I mean, this say that the city canceled events. I've seen a lot of people cancel their events anyways because it's just been a challenge. I mean, we had a we had a brief period in the fall uh, where we were able to do some things uh, when our numbers went down, and we were able to see. And and now we're we, we're challenged and we have numbers back up. So uh, my hope is we get to the um, we get to the spring, we find out the vaccine's working, and and we we can really open up and do everything that we want to do. We, that's what the city wants to do. I think that's what the public wants to do. But I think everybody is cognizant of just what it is with the virus. So um, I think this is a case in point. Um, we're finally starting to see the numbers come down. It's not surprising that we're we're you know three weeks after Christmas, um, three weeks into the year, um, because you know I think I think people once we got to New Year's. People started getting back to their regular routine, and we saw less contact. And then now we're seeing hospital numbers come down. So hopefully we'll see that happen 
further. And, and like I said, the vaccine hopefully will, will will give us the ability to get back open because I can't wait to get back open. I want That's what I want to do so bad. I'd much rather talk to you about the things we're doing positively uh, and the impact in the programs we're making. We got a number of them out there. Brian Cooper does a great job and he's ready to get going. But, uh, you know, it's it's not it's not Pensacola Parks and Recs that is preventing that from happening. It's it's that's all COVID-19. This is from Jeremy in Weekly. Can you talk a bit about the kayak launch that was put in at Bayview near the dog park? And also, when will the docks at Bayview's boat launches be repaired? Um, back to what we talked about before. Um, um, I think those fall in the boat launches where we where we have. Uh, we're working with FEMA, um, Jeremy. So again, as, as fast as we can get those those open and back up, we're, we're working with it. Um, staff is working with FEMA. Uh, we're working to make improvements, but everything we do, we want to do it in a way that makes it more resilient so it doesn't have a damage the next time. So that's that's what we're working on, and I, I totally support our staff. I think they're doing a great job at making sure that, that whatever we do and whatever we put in is going to be the best it can be to prevent it from happening again. Um, part of that, though, requires us to work through uh, the exercises with FEMA, we don't control we don't control those processes, but uh, we certainly respect them and work with them. And again, these are uninsured um, these are uninsured things. So you know, for us, it, you know, for us just to put our money into it would be fairly difficult. This is why we need uh, FEMA and 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 to work to uh, move forward. So uh, we think we can make all the improvements, uh, but everything we're doing right now is just as I made the comments earlier in the press conference, uh, we're working with FEMA and, and there's no, you know, we want to realistically set expectations that that we don't control this process. We do believe ultimately what we will get will be will be in a much better um, uh, scenario. But uh, but again, we, we can't control the timing of it um, and we're working. We're working every day to press it as fast as we can. Uh, but, you know, that's one of the problems when you when you work with federal government in the process, it, it just is not fast. This is from John at Studio 850. Could you go over again how the city will determine to reopen March public events such as festivals? Uh, John, we'll be making that decision probably by next Monday. We'll be looking at where our numbers are and what's the trend going forward. So, you know, I mean, I think. And it may be a scenario where we, uh, where we, where we're not able to do is, is you know, again, we 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 did this some this summer. We 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 would do it month to month. Um, if you remember, we originally thought we were going to be. We, by the time we got to September, we were going to be wide open, and we thought we could open. And again, we we ended up pushing everything back till October. So um, I think I think March could be very similar to September. Um, where our numbers are starting to head in the right direction. They're starting to decline, but we're not to where we want to get to. Um, so, you know, I, I don't want to speak too early, but we got another, another week or two. Uh, but to, unless something really drastically happens and we start to get down to 100 um, hospitalizations rather than 225, um, you know, it's just it's going to be it's going to be challenging. We, we'll probably end up doing like we did in September and pushing some things uh, back as we move forward. But I mean, it's our whole goal to get things to open as fast as possible. But I mean, this is this is what it is. Um, you know, I mean, three weeks ago you were telling us why weren't we closing stuff and why why do, why did we not close everything faster and what did we do and then and now all of a sudden we close it and you want to know how fast we're opening it. So you know, it, it's it's going to be dependent upon we got to make we got to make. Uh, we're making judgments based on what local conditions are showing us. And right now at 225 hospitalizations, um, we still are a little ways away from that. And again, based on our conversations with hospitals, we don't expect to see vaccines make a significant difference until uh, until probably, um, you know, getting into March. So, you know, at this point, that's where we are. Uh, I'd love, I would love to tell you, John, right now everything's going to be open in March. But, uh, you know, again, that's what I want to do. Uh, but again, I don't know that we're going to get to that point um, that we're going to be able to do that uh, with where our numbers are. So again, this is why we said if everybody got serious about masks and everybody did all the things we needed to do, we actually could open some things up. But, you know, it's just it's one of the problems that we're working with. 
Uh, we're going to keep pushing vaccines. We're going to keep pushing masks and, and, and what we can do. And hopefully we'll get the numbers down and we'd love to we'd love to open everything back up. That's what our whole goal is. That's what we're trying to do. Uh, but at this particular time, um, uh, you know, at this at this time, I don't I don't see necessarily where city permanent events. Our biggest thing is we want to keep businesses open. That's more important right now than 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 getting public sector stuff open. Uh, let's get let's keep businesses open. We've been able to do that through the summer. We've been able to do that through this run up. Um, but let's keep those businesses open um, so everybody can keep working and doing what they need to do. And we'll get stuff going as fast as we can. Um, once we can, once once we get our numbers down, well, we'd love to open back up. And this is from Laura at WEAR. When will the search firm actually start putting together a list for the police chief position? Will it be after the town halls? And I do want to clarify, uh, Laura, that the town halls you're referring to are just general more general CPAC town halls. Um, so we already had a couple of community input sessions for the police chief search. Those were the ones that were virtual last week. So just to clarify that. Yeah, so. um, and again, that's, I mean, that's sort of what uh, Gary, when he, he met with both the council last week and the beat, um, the CPAC the week before um, is sort of put out, um, you know, we're, we're in that collection period, information collection period, it probably will last through the first week of February, which is why I said even though uh, it is a CPAC town hall meeting um, happening February 4th, there'd probably be enough time that Gary would be taking that information. He's going to go in, write, write, write the report, go ahead and advertise the position and have that available. So, you know, all that will happen probably in mid uh, February um, to, uh, you know, probably mid March and then We'll start moving down on getting probably the 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 nominate the the process will probably close sometime in March and they'll start the process of 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 looking through all of them um, and make a first cut then move down and we'll have interviews that will be virtual interviews with uh, probably some of the people who are selected a, a bigger list and then eventually that will get whittled down to a smaller list who we will actually try to have some in person um interviews with and and the way we continue to work through the process usually is uh, i mean i get involved when we get down to the the last three and we have the local interviews um the team that's there uh typically oversees the beginning part of the process the all the other part and and also gary will be involved with us uh during that whole time because gary said very clearly we don't make determinations we help you we put all the information together but it's you that makes the uh you know your team and uh and then me in particular as we get down to the final three um so again that's kind of our three or four I, you know again i don't want to say what the exact number is but generally in, in the past in the process that's what it's been is um uh, is i've gotten involved when we get down to the very last group that has has interviews and it's typically three or four people and we handle the interviews so it wouldn't surprise me if we were somewhere that three to five uh, kind of range in our finalist, and that would be a point where I would get involved and uh, and begin to do the last interviews. All right, we don't have any more questions. All right, well, thank you very much. I hope uh, everybody has a good day, and um, it looks good. The weather it looks like uh, the sun's coming out a little bit, so should be a good day. Um, I know we're gonna have a little rain later on in the week, uh, but again, we'll we'll be back back out. Please remember. The closures that we have and, and certainly we appreciate all that the media does to uh, help us uh, get this information out we want to be able to get it out to the public so that they uh, they know what's going on and don't don't run into anything that we have in our, our detours but anyways i appreciate it and we'll look forward to seeing you next week